In the last video, we saw that we can use the Java class to represent an object in our programs. And so we created a my phone. Uh, we created, created uh, four instance variables to represent the memory cost, the carrier, and whether or not the, the Wi-Fi is on. We have a constructor, the second of the big three, that initializes the variables. And the third of the big three, the two-string method, which returns a string, a nicely formatted string of the uh, instance variable values. So let me close this up and take a look at the driver. So I'm going to create a new my phone, and I'm going to print it out using a system.out.println. And if I do this, it looks like uh, it should work. And if I run it, I get a nice little printout of my phone stats. Uh, this is nice, except the only problem with it is that every time I create a new my phone, I'm going to have these exact values. So it would be nice if I were able to create new my phones, or any object in my program for that matter, with values that I specify. So let's uh, try and see how this works. Uh, let me go to the driver first. Uh, from the perspective of the driver, it would be nice if I could do something like this. If I could create a new my phone and not use the default values, but let's say 64 gig, 599.99 for the cost. Let's go for the Verizon and true for the Wi-Fi being on. And then likewise, I get system.out.println. Okay, so if I compile this, we get an error because Java doesn't know uh, doesn't know how to handle this uh, new line of code here when when I'm providing uh, these values for the phone as opposed to as opposed to the default values. But it would be nice for, if we could do something like this, and in, in fact we can. We can use what's called a multi-argument constructor. Um, so let's take a look at the my phone and see how to do this. So this is right here is a zero argument constructor because I don't give it any information. It just uses this default information. But if I do give it some arguments, I can create an, a second constructor called my phone. But in the parentheses, I will specify some variables or parameters I want to use. So I will say, let's see, int initial memory for the initial amount of memory, uh, double initial cost. And notice how these are basically basically the same variable name except with the word initial in front to to uh, uh, initial carrier uh, to support the fact that they're initial values and boolean initial is y phi on uh, but the variable names other than that memory cost carrier is are the same so that we maintain consistency with the instance variables uh, in our at the top here. Okay, so I'm going to say end multi argument constructor. Each of these being an argument, so we have multiple arguments, four in this case. And in the body of the constructor, it's going to look pretty similar to this memory equals, not 16 though, I'm going to say initial memory, whatever that value is. You know, it was 64 in my driver, initial memory. Uh, cost equals, I could cut and paste that, or initial cost, carrier equals initial carrier, and uh, is Wi-Fi on, initial is Wi-Fi on, okay? So it's the same four lines of code, except I'm not providing default uh, hard-coded values. I'm providing values that I supply via the driver. So let me compile that. I think everything's spelled right. Um, close. And if I run my program now, looks like I get my information for my uh, zero argument constructor. And then you can see here I get the values for my multi-argument constructor. So the use of a multi-argument constructor in our programs allows us to specify values, exact values that we want to use in our for our object upon creation. And now that we can know how to, know how to do this, we can uh, now create uh, many instances of many different objects with any uh, particular properties.